Hey everybody, this is TJR, and I'm a little late jumping on this particular topic, and the reason being is that I got sick last week, had a mild case of the flu, and I just wasn't up to making videos. It was all I could do just to go to my day job and then come home. But I have been asked what I think about the upcoming release of the deluxe 50th anniversary box set of Electric Ladyland. This was the third and final album released by Jimi Hendrix during his lifetime. So the first thing that popped into my head when I found out about this new deluxe edition that was coming out in November was, didn't we just get a deluxe edition just like a few years ago? I guess time must fly really fast for me because after doing a little research, I realized, oh yeah, these came out in 2007. They're already over 10 years old. And by the way, I should mention, Prior to 2007, I had always considered myself to be nothing more than a casual fan of Jimi Hendrix's music, which is unusual because I'm a guitarist, but for the earlier half of my life, the only album I had by Jimi Hendrix was just a Greatest Hits album. But in 2007, when you know they released the ca entire catalog in these you know deluxe editions, I decided to just jump in headfirst and experience Hendrix. And since then now, I'm of course a very big fan. I also picked up the posthumous release that came out at that same time, uh, First Rays of the New Rising Sun, which I consider to be Jimi Hendrix's fourth album because they followed as closely as they could his instructions on how this album needed to be put together. And I consider it to be his fourth album. It's, it's, it's as fully realized as it possibly can be. And, and I've picked up a lot of the posthumous releases that have come out since. So the first question I asked myself was, well, I have this. Do I really want to go out and buy this other set? Now, as far as a new remastering, I'm not sure we need a new remastering of this album. Uh, this one sounds pretty good, and I'm not sure that the technology has improved that much. That's why I'm glad with these Beatles deluxe editions, Sgt. Pepper last year, the White Album this year, I'm glad these are not remasterings because it's too soon. But a remixing, yes, absolutely. Now this new remastering is being done by Bernie Grunman and this is from the original analog tapes. The um, remastering from 2007 was done by Eddie Kramer and George Mariano. I wanna add that Eddie Kramer is participating in the 5.1 mix uh, that will be on the Blu-ray and more about that in a moment. Now, quite frankly, I'd love to be proven wrong about this remaster, and I'd love to find out that it's an absolute revelation, but I just don't feel there has been enough of a technological advancement at this point that it's gonna make that big of a difference from the 2007 remastering. But with that said, let me tell you what I like about this upcoming release. First of all, I think one of the main attractions is going to be the Blu-ray. This Blu-ray is going to feature the first ever 5.1 surround sound mix of the entire original album. And once again, this is being overseen by Eddie Kramer, who was the original engineer with Jimi Hendrix on the original album. I'm going to quote now an excerpt from Rolling Stone magazine on this 5.1 mix. Uh, let me just read the following here. Although he worked hard to keep it true to the original mix he made with Hendrix, Listeners will hear new things in the mix according to the engineer. And then there's a quote here from Eddie Kramer. There's so much more clarity and so much more depth, Kramer says. You really can understand and hear a lot more detail of the underlying instruments, the rhythm guitars that Jimmy put in, the subtle things that were going on with the background vocals, the percussion. It's just in your face. You feel like you're in the room with the band. Once again, I'd love to be blown away by the 2018 remaster, but I have a feeling this 5.1 surround sound remix will be the real star of the set. Another thing that I really like about this reissue is the lack of configurations. Quite often with these deluxe reissue packages, there'll be like a two CD version, a three CD version, a deluxe edition, a super deluxe edition, a vinyl edition. And oftentimes I feel like the vinyl fans really get screwed over. And if they want to get the Goo Gaws in the Super Deluxe Edition, they have to buy both the vinyl and the Super Deluxe Edition. Not so with this 50th anniversary re-release. Both the CD version and the vinyl edition will have the exact same material. And with that said, I'm going to give a quick little rundown here. 
I'll use the, uh, the CD version here just to kind of give you all the details. CD1 contains, of course, the original album remastered by Bernie Grunman. CD2 contains a disc entitled Electric Ladyland, the early takes, which presents 20 never-before-heard demos and studio outtakes. CD3 that is the Jimi Hendrix Experience live at the Hollywood Bowl, September 14th, 1968. And this particular concert recording has never been released before. Now, the vinyl version basically replicates all of that completely, except that it's spread out over six 180-gram vinyl LPs, with each CD taking up two vinyl records. Both editions get the Blu-ray. Yes, you get the Blu-ray with the CD version, you get the exact same Blu-ray with the vinyl version. So if you're a vinyl enthusiast, you get to have everything. If you're a CD person, you get to have everything. And there is no single CD or two CD version that's a smaller version of the deluxe edition. That's it, just these two versions. And quite frankly, I rather appreciate this more simplified approach. Both editions also come with a full color 48 page book containing Jimmy's handwritten lyrics, poems, and instructions to his record label, as well as never before published photos from the recording sessions that were shot by Eddie Kramer himself. The CD edition will be contained in a Lux Casemade book. The vinyl edition will be packaged in a Lux Casemade lift top box. Both will feature new cover art and will feature the original photo that Jimi Hendrix wanted for this album in the first place, which was a photograph of himself and the band uh, posing with some children at a statue of Alice in Wonderland in New York Central Park. This photograph was originally taken by Linda McCartney, who at the time was known as Linda Eastman. I should add that the photo in question uh, actually was featured in this uh, reissuing here from 2007. They featured both the original photo and an alternate version in this edition. It's funny how time has made this such an iconic cover to most of us music fans, and yet this is not what Jimi Hendrix wanted. What he really wanted was this. All in all, these both look like pretty nice releases, and they both seem fairly affordable. The CD version is listing at approximately $42 on Amazon here in the U.S., and at approximately $96 for the vinyl edition as well. I don't think that $42 is a lot to pay for a nice-looking set that includes three CDs, a Blu-ray, and a book, and I also don't think that $96 is a lot to pay for six vinyl LPs, a Blu-ray, and a book as well. But what does perplex me is the release date. From what I understand, Electric Ladyland was originally released this month in October, which I think releasing it this month might have been a better idea than releasing it on the same day as the 50th anniversary deluxe edition of The White Album. Um, a lot of people have already pre-ordered The White Album re-release. I've pre-ordered it. Uh, that is not an inexpensive thing for me to buy, but I've already pre-ordered it. I think I will probably get this release, and if I do, I will get it on CD, but I will probably wait a little while. I probably won't get it the week that it comes out because I've already put forth some money on this Beatles White Album reissue. But if you really want to see me review this uh, Hendrix set, let me know. I might decide to buy it a little bit earlier if I get enough response on this. By the way, I thought I should also mention that even though this 2007 edition contained a DVD, these are clearly two different uh, packages. The DVD feature on this was only about 12 minutes long, so it's clearly not the same thing that we're getting with this new set. The booklet in this edition was only about roughly about 32 pages or so. I feel there will probably be some repetition. Uh, the 50th anniversary edition mentions, you know, some memorabilia like Jimmy's original handwritten lyrics and poems and his instructions to the record label. That was included on the booklet in this edition as well. So we'll probably get some repetition there. Hopefully they won't repeat the same essay that was in this. We'll get some new text uh, as well. I have a feeling we probably will. It feels like they're trying to avoid repetition between this 2007 set and what's coming out in November. And that's just being respectful to the fans. Now, of course, if you haven't bought this set, then this 50th anniversary set sounds like the way to go. 
But let me know what you think. What are your plans? Are you going to go for this set? Are you going to go for the CD version? Are you going to go for the vinyl version? For once, there's no reason to go for both because they're both going to have the exact same material. I'll look forward to checking out your comments on this. As always, if you like what I do, be sure to click like and subscribe and click the notifications bell icon so you can know when I release new videos. And if you want to help me make more videos, please go to the Patreon page and become a patron supporter. Uh, any amount you want to pledge is greatly appreciated and as little as $1 a month will make just an amazingly huge difference. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.